This video is about the polar form of complex numbers, de Moivre's theorem, and roots of unity. In this video, we will use the following notational conventions. C stands for the set of all complex numbers, and N will denote the set of all positive integers. So recall that given a complex number Z, we can write Z in the form R e to the i theta for some r greater than or equal to zero, and theta a real number. Theta is not unique. In fact, anything coterminal with theta will result in the same point in the complex plane. e to the i theta can be expressed in rectangular form as cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta. There's a quick sketch of a proof on the next page it uses series. You're welcome to pause the video and take notes if you need some extra hints. Thus, z is the point r cosine theta comma r sine theta in the complex plane. The absolute value of z is this number r, so we can always look for the, uh, the absolute value of z in the polar form by just looking at the coefficient here, and that is the distance from the origin to the point z on the complex plane. And theta is the angle whose terminal side passes through z. So now we state de Moivre's theorem. Let n be a positive integer, and let z be expressed as r e to the i theta. Then z to the n, equals r to the n times e to the i n theta. This is very easy to prove in polar form. z to the n equals r e to the i theta all to the n, which is r to the n times e to the i n theta. As a remark, de Moivre's theorem is often expressed uh, in this form, in the, in the rectangular form, r cosine theta plus i r sine theta all to the n is equal to r to the n times cosine of n theta plus i times the sine of n theta, which is clearly equivalent. And it can be proved using induction on n, but it is much harder to prove in this form. And so for this reason, we will use the easier polar form. As a corollary to de Moivre's theorem, if z is on the unit circle, then so is z to the n for all positive integers n. Proof, suppose z is on the unit circle, that means that its distance from the origin is 1. Then z can be expressed as e to the i theta for some theta. Thus, for any n, we have z to the n equals e to the i n theta. And again, looking for this coefficient, coefficient is 1. Therefore, the absolute value is 1. So here are a couple of examples. First, consider z equals 2 e to the pi i over 3. Then z to the fifth equals 32 e to the 5 pi i over 3. Here's a diagram. Here's z at the angle pi over 3 of magnitude 2. And here is z to the fifth down here at the, ang with, at the angle 5 pi over 3 uh, with magnitude 32. Another example, consider z equals e to the 2 pi i over 7. Note that the absolute value of z is equal to 1, so z is on the unit circle. So we know then that all the other powers of z are on the unit circle. And something interesting happens, z to the 7 is actually equal to 1. So here's a diagram, here's the z at 2 pi over 7, z squared is at 4 pi over 7, and so on. And when we get to z to the 7, we get to e to the 2 pi i, which is 1. z is called a seventh root of unity, since z to the 7 is equal to 1. In general, an nth root of unity is a number that, when you take it to the nth power, you get 1. Okay, so here are some concept checks. 
I urge you to pause the video and work the answer out for yourself before going on. Given z equals 1 half e to the i pi over 6, express z to the 4 in the form r e to the i theta and plot z and z to the 4 on the complex plane. So pause the video and come back when you're ready. Okay, here we go. So z to the 4 is 1 half to the 4 times e to the 4 pi i over 6. In other words, z to the 4 is equal to 1 16th e to the i 2 pi over 3. So here is a plot of these points. Here is z, and this is the terminal side of the angle pi over 6. Uh, then z squared is at pi over 3. z cubed is at 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2. And z to the 4 is at 2 pi over 3. And you can see their distances from the origin here. z is at a distance of 1 half. z squared is at a distance of 1 quarter c cubed is at a distance of 1 8th, and z to the 4 is a distance of 1 16th. Next, given w equals 3 e to the pi i over 5, what is the absolute value of w squared? Pause the video and come back when you have an answer. Okay, so hopefully you did not find this too challenging w squared is equal to 9 e to the 2 pi i over 5. Thus, the absolute value of w squared is right here equal to 9. In general, the absolute value of z to the n is the absolute value of z all to the n. This follows easily from de Waff's theorem, or you can prove it in a different way from a, an even more general fact that if z and w are complex numbers, the absolute value of zw is the absolute value of z times the absolute value of w. And that's very easy to prove using polar form, and then you can apply induction on n to get this fact. Here's our last concept check. Find a positive integer n such that u equals e to the 3 pi i over 4 is an nth root of unity. Is n unique? Pause the video and come back when you're ready. Okay, so u is equal to e to the 3 pi i over 4. And if you experiment, you can see that u to the 8 is equal to 1. So u is an eighth root of unity. Uh, but you might also notice that u to the 16 and u to the 24 are also equal to 1. So u is also a 16th root of unity and a 24th root of unity. And indeed, I claim that u is an 8kth root of unity for all k. And you might consider why that is true. And in fact, we'll have a proof on the next page. So if you want to pause the video and ponder that some more, I urge you to do that. In any case, n is definitely not unique. Okay, so more remarks. u is actually not an nth root of unity for any n smaller than 8. So that's also a nice observation to make. As proof, you can check it by hand. You can simply take powers of u and note that you don't get 1 until you get to n equals 8. Or, if you want a little more systematic proof, consider the following. e to the i theta will be equal to 1 if and only if theta is a multiple of 2 pi. So suppose u is an nth root of unity, then 3 pi n over 4 will be equal to some multiple of 2 pi, 2 pi k, then when you 
reduce this equation, you get 3n equals 8k. Uh, then by Euclid's lemma, since the GCD of 3 and 8 is 1, we must have that 8 divides n. So therefore, n must be at least 8. And in the process of proving this claim, we also have this nice fact here, which also shows us that if u is an nth root of unity, then n must be a multiple of 8. And in fact, the converse is true, too. Uh, we have that u is an nth root of unity if and only if 8 divides n. We will say that u is a primitive nth root of unity if n is the smallest positive integer such that u to the n equals 1. So in, in our case, u is called a primitive 8th root of unity. Since 8 is the smallest positive integer such that u to the n is 1. So it turns out that this concept of having the smallest n for which a complex number to that power equals 1 is an important one. A few more remarks. Powers of nth roots of unity are equally spaced on the unit circle by de Moivre's theorem. And here's a little picture of the situation with u. Here we are, This is here's the unit circle, and here is u at the angle 3 pi over 4. Then u squared all you have to do is double the angle. So here we are, go over 3 pi over 4 again, and we will end up at 3 pi over 2. So here's u squared, then go around 3 pi over 4 again, and you end up over here at u, u cubed. 3 pi over 4 again gets u to pi, which is uh, where u to the 4 is, and so on. And if you keep doing that, you'll notice that the first time you get to 1 is at u to the 8th. And so sure enough, all of these roots of unity, 8th roots of unity, are evenly spaced around the unit circle, an angle of pi over 4 apart. As another example, from example 2, e to the 2 pi i over 7 is a primitive 7th root of unity. Back here on this slide, you can see that, sure enough, z to the 7 is 1, and no smaller positive integer power of z gives you 1. So z is a primitive seventh root of unity, since z to the 7 is equal to 1, and z to the n is not 1 for all positive integers less than 7. In summary, Every complex number z can be expressed not uniquely in polar form, r e to the i theta. We had de Moivre's theorem that says if z equals r e to the i theta, then z to the n equals r to the n e to the i n theta. And it's important corollary that if z is on the unit circle, then z to the n is also. We defined an nth root of unity as a complex number, which when taken to the nth power gives you one. The powers of an nth root of unity are equally spaced around the unit circle. A complex number u is a primitive nth root of unity if n is the smallest positive integer such that u to the n equals one. I hope you found this video helpful.